Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from I'm Shattered and says, My boyfriend asked for a paternity test. As soon as the results show he's the father, I'm leaving him. My boyfriend asked for a paternity test for our child. As soon as the results come and show he is the father, I'm leaving him. I'm a new mum to a baby boy who is my pride and joy. And though it's been a roller coaster adjusting to taking care of a baby, the past few months have been great. Tiring, but great. I have a boyfriend of three years who is the first person relationship wise I've ever loved, and I thought we were doing great as new parents, but also as partners. Friday, he came home and asked me for a paternity test. Just like that, it was completely out of the blue. I was putting away the dishes and he asked for one, like he was asking what was for dinner. I'm a different race from him, but our child, apart from the skin tone, is literally his mirror image from pictures I'd seen of him when he was a baby. I was stunned when he asked and his reasons were that he had to be sure he was the father. He had to have that certainty. All I remember as he was speaking is just immediately feeling pain. The man I love doesn't trust me. He would actually believe that I would F someone else, cheat on him, and then try to pass off another man's baby as his. I've never ever given him the reason to think I would cheat on him. I've tried to be transparent and communicated and it wasn't enough. He told me he would give me time to think about this, that he wouldn't go behind my back and do this test, but for our relationship to move forward, he needs to be 100% sure. He repeated this because in his words, he needed me to realize how serious he was. After thinking for a couple of days, I'm going to allow him this paternity test because I have nothing to hide. I never cheated and would have never cheated on him. Once it's proven that he's the father, I'm ending it. Leaving the same day, and I'm going to try my best to be a cooperative co-parent with him. In the meantime, I'm coming up with my exit plan, a place to live and a lawyer to work out a custody arrangement in court. I can't even tell my family or friends right now because they would go nuclear and my first priority is our child. I hope the test was worth it to him. I'm not asking for advice or reassurance or to explain his side. I just, I'm just realizing this part of my life is now over. What a way to start the new year, huh? I remember a similar story we covered in the past where I think it was the husband at the time came back randomly and asked for a paternity test. And it turns out, you know, he was out with his boys drinking and there was some conversation. I can't remember exactly what the conversation was, but that changed his mind and he had to ask for one as soon as he got home. But I guess that's going to be the question in all this. What changed his mind? What made him think down this path? There's all sorts of ways we could go from the many, many stories we've covered in the past. But I always think about once that line's been crossed, you know, you've, you've basically been told you, you're not trusted. Look past that afterwards. It must be incredibly difficult. Obviously, marriage counseling for one might help, but would you be able to look past that? But in the comments, TX Potato Farmer says, the best advice I heard about a divorce or separation is to say, this is now a business decision. Make all your decision making be from that point of view. Let your friends and family, your clergy, if any, and your therapist be your emotional support system. Kudos to you for stating outright that you are going to try and co-parent. You sound level-headed despite what is going on. Sensitive Engineer says plenty of bio kids don't look like one or sometimes both of their parents. Random redhead in a family of blondes, light skin in a darker family, brown skin in a predominantly white family. Genetics are rough, but it's not hard to understand that just because you are the father, it doesn't mean the kids is guaranteed to look like you. It's ridiculous. My oldest looks like me and my youngest looks like my husband. All the same traits. You can barely tell the kids are full-blooded siblings. WO says, was he cheated on before? My son's mother was a cheater. It effed me up for a good while. I finally found a woman who helped me heal after countless relationships that I threw away because I was gutted. I would have asked for a paternity test too. If this isn't his past, then he's saying he doesn't want to be a father yet. Category Kiwi says, whenever I read threads on subreddit like this one, I try to think about what kind of context we might be missing that changes the tune. Your story was one that came to mind. If OP's boyfriend went through something similar, it's a lot more reasonable. That's not to say it's unreasonable to break up with him for it. That's up to OP. 
And I wouldn't say it's unfair if she decided to, even in this case, in this particular hypothetical. Edit, come on people. I'm just saying we might be missing context. On the flip side, we might not be. Or we might be missing context that makes it even worse. Please stop reading like I'm actually commenting on the guy's character. And one more comment from Real Cold Logic who says two cents. Being a parent is a daunting step in life for the father as well as the mother. It's incredibly difficult for both. Men can suffer from postnatal depression too and can also have difficulty in adapting. I would break down his reasoning and go from there. Certainly wouldn't be risking a child not having a loving and united family because of one parent's MH and paranoia. This is a bigger decision than you realize. Do you want more kids? More kids with different fathers? No more kids? Your child to have a sibling or two? There's a lot to lose here. It's not a simple breakup now. I genuinely don't think you've got enough information to make that decision yet. Get the results and see his reaction. If he's over the moon with the results or gutted because he's now a dad and he can't get out of it, that will tell you everything you need. Whatever you do, do it for the right reasons. Reasons which now include your child. Good luck. So then OP came in to update the post three weeks later and said, We did the paternity test my boyfriend wanted. My post was removed, so I'm going to post it here. It's been a couple of weeks since I posted and I have just been navigating things after. I'm going to call my boyfriend, Mason, to keep things clear. This is going to be long, I'm sorry. Also, why post on Reddit? I don't know, guys. I don't know. To clarify a few things. One, we're different races, but to my knowledge, his family plus extended is more than okay with it. His mother actually set us up. I went to a dinner party and he and I were the only single people who had been invited and we hit it off. She admitted to trying to set us up for months. Two, we have had no issues with cheating or any situations where things could be sketchy during the years we have been together. We also haven't broken up or taken any breaks. Three, our son is his mirror image. My boyfriend confided to his cousin about the paternity test a couple of days after he asked me and the cousin told his wife and it spread like wildfire, especially in their family group chats. His mum put an end to the speculation though by doing a half and half pick of him and our son but also by adding some additional individual pics of both of them. She posted the pictures in the family group chat and said, look at the old pics I found of Mason. After people commented, she said, actually, the one on the right is my grandchild, or this one isn't Mason. Literally, the family members just thought that it was the same person in all of the pics and that some of the photos were taken in darker lighting. That is how much our son looks like him, which I find funny, but also a little annoying. Like I carried you for nine months, or for you to be a copy of your dad. I didn't see the group chat, but the topic died down when his mum did that. Anyway, we talked. When I had made the first post, I was so angry and planned to leave, but the anger was quickly replaced by hurt once I calmed down. I realized if I blindsided him like that, I would be doing the exact same thing that he did to me when he asked for a paternity test. I planned to ask him to talk, but I also didn't want him to think I was trying to get out of the test. So beforehand, I booked an appointment at two different paternity test locations. I asked him to talk when he came home and I made sure our child was at my mum's. I told him that whatever happened with this talk, the paternity test had been booked and would go forward. I basically asked him his reasoning and when he started having doubts about paternity, was it a previous relationship? Did cheating happen? He said it was about a week before he asked me that he started having doubts. He said that he was on his lunch break one day, just reading articles and and he clicked on an article about a man who found out his three kids weren't his after like 20 years. This led him into a rabbit hole of podcasters and YouTube videos that encourage men to ask for paternity tests. While he thought those podcasters were idiots, he said that paternity was an exception. He said his reasoning was that some women have done this before and he wanted to be sure. He said, you know it's yours because the baby comes out of you, but how do I know? The test gives me that assurance. I was hurt by that, but I decided to explain how I felt. I said that for him, it was a rational request, but for me, it was basically him saying that he doesn't trust me. It was him saying that he believed I would cheat on him, get pregnant, have him emotionally, financially, and physically support me during the pregnancy and birth, and basically lie to him while he raised another man's child. I told him that I understand that women had done this before, but the fact that he thought I would do this to him is what bothered me. I told him the truth that when I was angry, I had planned to leave and that I even went looking into a lawyer, a 
co-parenting plan and a new place to live. He was stunned. I would leave for something so small. I found that to be a weird kind of irony. That he believed issuing an ultimatum about a paternity test and basically accusing your partner of cheating was something small. I told him I was really hurt by what he said, but I was still hurt, but that if he needs this peace of mind, that we would do it. He asked what about our relationship, and I told him I didn't know. We did the test two days later, got the results back after three days. He opened both of them, and to the surprise of no one, he's the dad. He was visibly relieved when he read the test, and, and I don't know why that hurt more. It's been about two weeks from the results, and I'm still really hurt. God, I sound so pathetic. I feel pathetic. I thought the results would maybe relieve some of that, but it didn't. It's like a switch clicked when he asked me for the test, and I can't find a way to click it off. I'm pretty sure postpartum is playing a part in this because all I do is cry and I wasn't like this before. I've also moved into the spare room. Something he was against but I felt bad because apart from when our son is awake, I'm sad all the time. I'm looking for a therapist. I don't know how people find therapists they like so quickly by the way. And he wants to do couples therapy and he's looking for one. He already had a few appointments booked just to try them out. He wants to move on. Marriage, more kids in the future and go back to where we are and thinks that our relationship is now stronger. Well, I'm just thinking our relationship right now is weaker than a person on stilts. I don't know if I would say we are together. The physical affection is gone. I'm not in the right mindset, and I don't want him to touch me. We rarely talk about anything but the baby. It's awkward. I'm trying to find a way to go back to where we were, and I can't see how. I'm going to try to fix this and try therapy, individual and couples. But I just have this feeling that this is basically a sinking ship. I hope I'm wrong. I want very much to be wrong. Edit. I really appreciate the kind messages. I know some people are worried, but I have a contingency plan in place. I have a lawyer. I've gotten a childcare slash custody plan worked up during these two weeks. I've told my family, who are mostly close by. I have a rental property I own and can go to. Our finances are separate, so I'm good there. I know myself and I know I'm not in the right headspace right now. I'm staying in the spare room. There is no affection. Therapy, individual or couples will hopefully help me and will hopefully reaffirm that I had the right idea in the beginning. It's not easy to move on when there's a child, so I'm making sure that I'm mentally well. Our child is good and then I'll make a decision. Thank you though for all your kindness and perspectives. I really appreciate it. And Opie's last update says, I left. Things have gone downhill and under advisement, I can't really discuss it until things have been settled in court. I guess I'm really a cautionary tale on what can go wrong. Please, if you have concerns with your partner, discuss things beforehand, especially before you have a child. Thank you again for your different perspectives. Hoping to have everything settled eventually. Wow, and I sort of wonder what happened at the very end there. It sort of went from zero to a hundred just like that. Is it just because, you know, she decided it's enough and the lawyer would have said, you know, don't talk about this anywhere kind of thing? I really don't know. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on this one and let's move on to another story and our next story comes from a throwaway account and says am i the a-hole for not letting an elderly woman have my son's seat on the bus all right so my son 17 has weekly therapy appointments that i take him to unfortunately my husband let our daughter borrow his car and then had an emergency at work so he had to use my car so my son and i had to take the bus it wasn't ideal, but I'd rather the bus than miss an appointment. While it isn't my place to share why he goes to therapy, I will say that he will often forget to eat. I usually make sure he's fed, but due to the mess in the morning, it slipped my mind. The bus wasn't too crowded, but all the seats were taken. My son wasn't doing too well, and I could tell he was feeling dizzy from hunger plus the bus. So the second someone got off their seat, I sat him down. I then tried to find a chocolate bar I had in my bag. While this is happening, I notice an elderly woman and her adult daughter standing beside us. I didn't pay much attention until the daughter tapped me on the shoulder. She asked if my son could move so that her elderly mother could have a seat. I felt really bad. I really did. But my son was not doing great and standing would make it harder. I'd found the chocolate and he was eating it slowly. But if he stood up right then, I can assure you he would have fainted. I apologized to her and explained that my son wasn't feeling well. She rolled her eyes at me and said that she saw him standing earlier and that he's a young, healthy teenage boy, he'll be fine. 
I apologized once again and told her that he wasn't feeling well and that if he was, then he himself would have offered her a seat. The daughter told me to look at her mother and I admit, the poor woman looked really tired, but I couldn't. My son had started to lean against me so I told the woman one last time that I was sorry and to ask someone else. I then heard them both whispering and calling me an entitled B. And when we got off the bus, a woman that got off with us said that a teenage boy can handle standing more than an elderly woman can and that she hopes someone treats me like that when I'm her age. My son was so out of it. I don't think he even noticed or cared, but I can't get this off my mind. Am I the a-hole? A totally unrelated woman thought I was along with the two. I wasn't sitting down and did not have a seat. And we're starting the comments with new friend who says not the a-hole. You handled it the same way I would have. Politely explaining that your son wasn't feeling well and needed to sit. I'm sure there were many other people they could have asked and many other people that could have offered. So I'm not sure why they felt the need to pick on you and your son. Opie responded and says, I'll be fair and say that all of the people on the bus, my son was the youngest. So I suppose I understand the thinking. Everyone else sitting on seats were elderly or women. Canvas Shoe says, not the a-hole, have an invisible illness is the pits. For just this very reason, I too get these crashes on occasion and there's no choice to it. If I don't sit down and get something in me, a Gatorade if nothing else, I will pass out. I've been this way all my life, thin and chunky, and yes, and have been to billions of doctors over it. Slight exaggeration. 99% of the time, I manage it well, but sometimes forget to eat or think it's been a lot less time since last eating than it has been. Spicy Tea says, not the a-hole. Sorry they were so rude to you. Often people have disabilities or illness that is not obvious from their appearance. Once you explain to them that your son had a need for a seat, they should have backed off. After that, it was their issue. Also, if the elderly woman needed a seat so bad, they could have asked basically anyone on the bus who was able-bodied. It doesn't make any sense that he limited their search to one person because he was a teenage boy. OK Status says, not the a-hole. People who are older with visible disabilities shouldn't assume that another younger passenger is able to stand, since they might have a hidden disability, shorter term injury, or might simply be ill slash lightheaded at the time in question. After all, dizziness can be caused by low blood sugar, ear infections, migraines, motion sickness, and some medications, amongst other things. And if you are lightheaded or dizzy, it is much harder to keep balance on a moving bus or train. I don't think that the elderly woman's daughter was necessarily wrong to ask if your son could give up his seat, but she should have accepted your response that he wasn't feeling well and moved on rather than first trying to pressure slash guilt you slash your son into giving up his seat and then subsequently insult you for declining on your son's behalf. I'm confused though. Why the woman tapped you on the shoulder to ask you if your 17-year-old son could give up his seat rather than address your son directly? Opie responded saying, See, her asking me instead of my son was likely my son was very attached to me. He was leaning on me and looking down the whole time. Probably didn't look very approachable, I guess. And that was exactly my thinking all the way through this one. We don't know what's going on. You know, it could be physical, it could be mental. But there's many invisible illnesses that require you to need a seat when, when, when traveling on a bus or train or whatever, public transport. And like that last comment said, I don't think it's necessarily bad to ask someone, are you able to give up your seat for my mom or, or whoever it is? And OP wasn't rude about it in this situation. They just explained about it. And then you need to accept that and move on. Ask someone else, not start arguing and making them feel bad. Making you feel bad to the point that you're having to come on Reddit to ask if you're an a-hole in this situation. I'm incredibly sorry that you and your son had to go through that. I'm incredibly sorry you had to face that and you know have someone follow you off the bus as well and then continue that as well. What is going through their head, honestly? But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? How would you have handled that if it was you? Let me know your thoughts. Maybe you yourself have gone through something similar in the past. Let us know down in the comments below. As always, would love to hear it. A huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Thank you so, so much. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting the like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And don't forget there'll be a playlist at the very end of the video with a couple of videos there. You can click on and it will scroll through all the videos automatically for you. Thank you so much. And hopefully I will see you in the next one.
Take care and much love.